First of all, thank you. I'm here because of you guys. You voted me here, which makes me question your mental well-being, but, uh, <laughs> you, you know. Um, anyway, the usual train wreck warning. So I literally, I kid you not, Keith, so it, I was finishing my presentation while he was doing the giveaway, so, so it's going to be unstructured, rambling, all the usual stuff. So. Um, Anyway, bear, bear with me. Uh, the last 10 minutes will be, will be actually uh, fun. We'll have some practical, practical stuff that you may not have seen. So hey, uh, let's do a raffle. Uh, this may get me fired. I didn't ask any permissions, uh, but uh, we should raffle out an AP43, right? Uh, like all bells and whistles, uh, missed, missed AP, the latest and greatest, Wi-Fi 6, uh, really, really good AP. So, Thanks to help from Nick Turner, we actually made this pretty easy. So all you need to do is take a picture of that. If you just want to go into the raffle, uh, works with iPhones and most Androids. Uh, take a picture and it will automatically generate a tweet for you that they, you can then send. Uh, which promotes uh, me and my company, not my company actually, I just worked there. I uh, joined a few, few months ago, but, but it, you know. Uh, it's a social media promotion scheme made to, you know, look like a raffle or something like that. <laughs> uh, so, um, I'll show it to you again. Tweet it, tweet it, left and right, our marketing people will be more than happy. The more mentions, uh, the more mentions Miss Systems gets, the more paycheck I get, so uh, beers on me, guys. All right, so... Back to business. Um, we, we were here to talk about, or I'm here to talk about RTLS. That's what I promised you. And what is RTLS? If it existed in the 80s, it would have made this movie unnecessary, right? Why? <laughs> Where is that damn, ha ha you know, John McClane? Oh, there he is. Let's go kill him. <laughs> that's, that's it. End, end of movie, guys. Unless he was hiding in the ducts, uh, <laughs> of course. Eddie actually posted that on BadFi. I found it there. Um, anyway, so today we're going to talk about uh, accuracy of Wi-Fi systems, because to me that's really important, especially when it comes to failing. Uh, we'll, and we're going to also talk about total cost of ownership type of thing. And we're going to focus on enterprise type of Wi-Fi tracking, so healthcare and, and you, you know, wh where you typically see this kind of stuff not necessarily like, you know, heat maps of, or, or like visitor count, uh, you know, somebody looking at your window, that kind of stuff. This is me. Uh, I do janitorial duties at MIST. Uh, there's my certifications. And uh, that's an actual place in Iceland. I kid you not. It, it is. We detoured 50 kilometers to go there. My girlfriend definitely wasn't happy, like, you want to go there for a sign? And I was like, yes. <laughs> True story. So, uh, this is important. Tonight at 6.15 p.m., do not miss it. Uh, many of you may have heard of MIST systems. We do Wi-Fi infrastructure slightly differently from the other guys. and. Uh, we're hosting an evening event, we're showing demos, uh, you can talk to all our experts, uh, Wes will be there, Bob Friday, our CTO will be there, uh, you, you know, and 10 other missed people, probably Sudir, our, our like visionary VP will be there. You'll be in good company and it will be all technical, no sales pitches whatsoever allowed. And food, food will be there as well, so, so um, not cupcakes, but food, okay? So, this is me. Uh, follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, all of that stuff, and uh, Google UC Wi-Fi, uh, you will find me there. This is what I did previously. Uh, this happened, I don't know, six or seven years ago or something like that. And um, what happened after that? Uh, Ekaha was acquired by, by a venture capitalist company. But before, before that, before uh, the Wi-Fi design stuff, I actually was hired to Ekaha to do RTLS. So this is me in 2002. <laughs> and uh, you can see what RTLS uh, can do to a person, okay? So pay attention. <laughs> pay attention, okay? Okay, but in all honesty, um, although this happened, uh, that was because I was a bit too early uh, in the game. Today, RTLS really actually... How many of you have deployed RTLS? 
Yeah, guys, it's, co it's coming mainstream. Uh, it it's actually works these days. But still, it has a lot of caveats. How many have failed deploying RTLS? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, so let's talk a little bit about that today. Uh, luckily, for example, like BLE has solved a lot of the issues I was struggling with, like, you know, standardization, client devices, uh, and especially battery life. Battery life is a big deal uh, in RTLS. So if we talk about um, RTLS use cases, um, there's the traditional location heat maps, so visitor statistics, all that kind of stuff. Then there's the dot on a map related things. Uh, so finding stuff and indoor navigation. And this is one of my favorite use cases for RTLS, is like finding is, no, is like easy to, super easy to implement, and it works, and it doesn't have a hard accuracy requirement in it. And then there's the room slash zone automation. Let's say, for example, a patient goes into a patient room in a hospital, do something. Uh, the patient exits the, the room, do something. Then the doctor exits the room, call the cleaner, this kind of stuff. Uh, in terms of technologies, uh, there's, the, you can divide this in a lot of ways, but the way I like to divide the different technologies is first this kind of infrastructure that provides you X and Y and floor coordinates for the tracking. Uh, at MIST, we have a specialized circuit board with 16 antennas in the AP to get uh, you know, BLE plus directionality. Uh, other vendors do it, do it in different ways, and of course we do Wi-Fi as well. But examples of this kind of technology, Wi-Fi, BLE, and ultra-wideband. Uh, we'll mostly touch Wi-Fi and BLE, but towards the end we'll talk ultra-wideband as well. How many of you have deployed ultra-wideband for RTLS? Ian. So one. Congratulations. Um, but that's, it's a good tech, but, but as, as we see, it's, it's a niche use case technology. How many of you have deployed Wi-Fi RTLS? How many of you have deployed BLE, Bluetooth RTLS? Yes, exactly, and this is the trend we have been seeing. I've been doing this raise hands in the previous years at CWNP and all that. So we're seeing uh, BLE get more and more popular, but Wi-Fi is still what people mostly have deployed because it's been around uh, for a longer time. So, okay, you have the infrastructure that provides X, Y, but then uh, there's, in many cases, especially healthcare, you have a hard requirement of, I need to know for sure when you're in this room, for example. And for that, we have different technologies, the most common being uh, ultrasound, for example, Sonitor does this. Uh, then we have infrared light. My previous uh, employer did this. So, so essentially, ultrasound means fill the room with sound, but make sure that it not much sound comes out of the room. So if I hear the sound, it has to be in this room. Uh, infrared light, same thing. Fill the room with infrared light. And then if the tag catches that infrared light, you know it's in this room. And then there's what's called exciters. So uh, Aeroscout does this 125 kilohertz. Uh, you, you know, it wakes, wakes, up, wakes up the tag when you go past it. So different things for ensuring that room, let's say near 100% room accuracy. So when you're deploying RTLS, some of the key building blocks are really, you need lots of signals typically for the XY. The more signals you have, the better. And the stronger signals you have, the better. And then people are like, well, but all I need is three APs, right? Because it's triangulation. No, that's, that's, that's not the case. So the more you have, the better it is. And with three, it's like the absolute minimum often for, for different things. But, uh, but you want like a readily deployed uh, network type of thing to see how the uh, RTLS really performs. You want the RTLS system to be low maintenance and to work with various devices, obviously. Um, so talk about fails. Thank you. Uh, I deserve that. I do that all the time to everybody, so. Um, let's talk about fails in RTLS. So I went to South Africa in 2003 uh, to deploy an RTLS system. And uh, the idea was there's these 20-ton uh, machines that drive around and, and they actually extract ore from the mine and then they bring that ore to a different place and then they extract the diamonds uh, out of that ore, okay? So our goal was to track these cars uh, with Wi-Fi RTLS and, and, you know, automatically know uh, where has the ore been taken from. 
all good. Uh, we had a computer inside the vehicle. We had an Agier Lucent Orinoco uh, 8011B card in there, which was constantly scanning, providing us, you know, location data. The thing is, I never talked to the sales guy before I actually hopped on the plane to South, Amer South Africa. He liked to do these projects himself because he was the project manager specialist as well as the sales guy. So the, uh, when I got to South Africa, the guy was like, yeah, let's start deploying this. So we'll put APs every 200 meters, which is like six, every 600 feet, because, you know, Wi-Fi carries a long distance when it's open space. And we need that one meter accuracy, by the way. Okay, so that was, that was the end of, end of that project. Uh, it went well. Actually, we, we got pretty good accuracy, but obviously uh, it wasn't good enough. So, so what failed here was communication, first of all. Uh, we had no internal dialogue between sales and systems engineering. Like, literally, no. Today it would be unheard of, but that's what happened. Uh, we also had an over-promise of accuracy, so, so we promised one meter, although the system couldn't even do realistic one meter, uh, you know, indoors, let alone if the APs are so far apart. And then the APs also started falling down from the mine uh, three days after the installation, so that, that, was, uh, that, that was not good. So, but accuracy is really uh, what failed us here, and that's... To my experience, accuracy is most commonly the culprit of, of uh, failed RTLS projects. And, you know, it's really important to understand the customer business and define the scope, because those, um, those really impact the accuracy. You need to, first of all, minimize the scope of the RTLS project. Here's how, how an RTLS sales call typically goes, or, or sales visit. Um, you go to the customer, you, you introduce the RTLS system, and the customer gets really excited, and then they're like, yeah, in ad addition to this, we could do this, that, and the other, and this, and this, and this as well, and the sales guy goes, yes, let's do it all right away. No. Uh, that's, that's, first of all, that gets things complicated, and those different use cases require different infrastructure, different accuracy, all of that stuff. So minimize the scope. First understand the business, and then minimize the scope. And the... The two upper layers, if you get the accuracy right, then they are doable. You don't need to, like, at that point, you, you don't need to be, you know, breaking laws of physics anymore. So you're good, like, deploying the apps and, and generating the location of your applications, all of that, that's doable once you know that the infrastructure can deliver that accuracy. So focus on that accuracy thing. Uh, one fail is believing uh, what's out there in the internet. So this is uh, Newberry Networks. Anybody heard, heard of Newberry Networks? Anybody as old as I am? You may not, you may not know, but this was one of the first um, location tracking players. And look at what they promised. <laughs> exactly. That's right, Jen. That's what I'm talking about. That's the, that's the appropriate 100% reaction. Locate devices to room level with proven accuracy at 99% in under 30 seconds. This was play, pure Wi-Fi only. And the, like nothing defined, no number of access points, one access point per room, nothing. It just, just works 99%. That 1%, that's a big percent right there. Um, so, so then there's this thing like, um, you, Anybody ever went to RTLS uh, project, install it, and then, then kind of wait for the miracle, like uh, start fine-tuning and fine-tune it for days and weeks, and yeah, we can fix this with uh, moving the infrastructure, then we can fix this with fixing the algorithm. I like the, like the algorithm guys will take a look at it and that will fix it. It sometimes happens, but uh, unless you can fix it with the infrastructure, it's, it, it's kind of har hard. And this is literally the last quote is, is, uh, is from, our, from the same sales guy I, I used to work with at Ekaha. You know, just keep their hopes up until we get the next PO. <laughs> uh, store, st <laughs> story about the same sales guy. Actually, we, uh, we didn't get along like awesomely well. Uh, we worked at the same office. So uh, Ekaha CEO comes to the office uh, the day after the New Year's. And so does the sales guy, and the sales guy has like really badly beaten face, like black guy and all of that. The CEO runs to my room and says, you just show your knuckles. <laughs> I, I kid you not, totally happened. So 
We haven't gotten to the point yet. I've wasted, I have five minutes left of my own slot, but that's fine. Uh, so, so let's talk about Wi-Fi or like uh, location accuracy. This is really important. So what do, what do these things mean? Average accuracy, 99%, 90%. These are so misused. And same with like room accuracy, like 99% room accuracy or just room accuracy and all, all of that stuff. So uh, there's always positioning error or locationing error in a location system. So there's the actual uh, place where you are truly, where that, let's say the tag is, and then there's the calculated position, which is the end of the arrow there, right? And that's called location error. Fine, that's good. Uh, so let's take a two meter diam is it two meter diameter in English and one meter radius. One meter radius uh, circle and two meter diameter, right? So if you have 100% of the time one meter accuracy, Okay, that means you have 100% room level accuracy as well, right? Yeah, no, no it doesn't. For example, in this scenario, if you're next to the wall or whatever, it's, it's really not, and, and by the way, one meter accuracy 100% of the time, it's a pretty complex thing to, to achieve as well. So this is then one meter average accuracy, right? Because sometimes, it's much worse, like three meters, sometimes it's much less, but it averages out to one meter. And this is one meter 80% of the time, so four out of five estimates are within that one meter circle. So, so um, speaking of accuracy, let's talk about my trip to Wisconsin uh, in 2004, and again, remember, lost the hair. Wisconsin, a big par part of it. So, so went there and, um, we needed to, uh, you know, track Alzheimer patients and and uh, ring the alarm whenever they are, you know, escaping the building. The thing is, <laughs> I kid you not, the integrator implemented a system where the entire building of the hospital they had a PA system. The PA system would start bam, bam, bam if somebody went close enough to the door, and then of course, yeah, it wakes up the whole hospital. And then you, you need it to be like, yeah, yeah, just, you know, when he's, when he, when he's right at the door, uh, ring, ring that bell. Okay, so we got the accuracy down to pretty good. But the thing was, there was a 100% zone accuracy requirement, right? So even if we missed one location erroneously to, to the door, uh, uh, the, the whole hospital wakes up. Not very nice. And you know what this is? So we were updating the tag location every second in the system. This is the number of location estimates for each of the tags in a week. So even if one of these went wrong to the zone, the whole hospital wakes up. So you need a 99.99999% accuracy and that's not good enough uh, so, so that there's no false alarms. Anyway. Um, so that leads us to understanding location calculation. So there's, actually it's hard to see there, but there's a tag on the left, then there's an AP at the, at the top, then there's a cloud. So it's a bit uh, faded, the, that projector. Look here or on the screen so you can see. So what happens here is uh, the tags blink, that's called the blink rate, and then the cloud calculates the location, that's the location calculation interval. And they may not be the same thing. The tag may blink uh, three times a second, which is typical for BLE tags, and the location may be calculated, let's say, every five seconds. Makes it more accurate. If you calculate the location for every blink, then uh, the accuracy is probably lower because the system has you know, less data in, in its hands. Again, resulting in this. Uh, then there's the whole associated client versus blinking client uh, dilemma. Should we talk about that? I have uh, how many minutes? 11. Okay. Um, this is important for RTLS. I, I want to touch a few more points and then, then we'll talk ultra wideband. So if you're tracking tags, this is a common misconception. If you have BLE tags, you cannot use to my knowledge, battery-powered BLE infrastructure, right? You can't put those beacons on the wall and expect the beacons to hear the tags. This is a common misconception. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're tracking a phone, the BLE beacons on the walls will work to enhance the accuracy. But because of battery-saving reasons and the way the tags communicate, let's say the tag only wakes up now and then, uh, the beacons will not be able to pick it up. So do not do that. Uh, obviously, floor accuracy in RTLS is important, so uh, this is great, 
This is not. And even one, uh, if you're every now and then off a floor, not a good thing. And the reason why floor hopping often happens is badly placed APs. They are in the false ceiling, like that. Or thank you, Blake Crony, for this picture. This is this hotel. Seriously, this is this hotel. So, so uh, I wouldn't expect a good floor accuracy. So, so in RTLS, floor accuracy is super important. And I'm not going to talk about the case, but um, you, you want to um, like have the APs pretty close uh, to the client device or the tracked devices brought down from the ceiling. And if you do a hallway deployment, to my experience, uh, you don't want to do that, not for Wi-Fi, but not for um, BLE tracking, for example, either. The reason is, if, you're, if you only cover the hallways, put the APs there, at the ends of the rooms is where, where you will be seeing a lot of uh, floor hopping, because often the floor algorithms rely on strong signal. They first, uh, you know, the simplest algorithm would be look at the signal of the strongest AP, and that's the floor I'm on. And that's kind of how you want to think about it, too. The algorithm is more complicated, but you want the strongest signal always coming from the AP on that particular floor. Okay. Last thing I want to touch before I let, let my friends loose is um, actually this. Orientation and, and walls. So the reason Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and BLE accuracy might be degraded is this. So let's, let's imagine a point to the middle of the room where the signal strength from the AP is minus 55 dBm, right? So put a wall there and it drops to minus 58. This is great. Minus 55, minus 65. So a wall attenuates 3 dB, but the person plus the device orientation can attenuate 10 dB. And this is why room accuracy using BLE and Wi-Fi is pretty hard to do, because, you know, a person attenuates so much more than a wall. And speaking of RSSI differences and inaccuracies, read Wi-Fi Nigel's latest blog. Anybody read this? Yeah, it's very, very good. So essentially, he tested different orientations of a device, and he moved it by six inch, and the variations were like about 10 dB between different locations. Same device, 10 dB difference depending on the orientation and the location within the six dB square. With that, um, the last thing I'm, oh, oh. Ideal orientation uh, for RTLS is this. So, so you have the tag right here, so your body is not blocking it, right? Okay, last thing I want to say, which is the third last thing, uh, I, 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 do, I do understand. So, so, um, so at MIST, actually, this is how you calibrate your RTLS system, because um, we, don't, we don't do calibration, blah, 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 but the point is, TCO is good to understand, so how much it costs for you to, to do the calibration to the system recalibration, moving the APs, do you need to touch your location system, uh, what if you lose calibration data, all, all of that stuff. So, so just um, for Wi-Fi, I created this thing called Consumed Human Energy Per Access Point Index. And this is why I like uh, my employer. Uh, <laughs> Because our cheapo index, I, I feel, is pretty good. We have a minimal number of boxes. It's, uh, it's very much relies on automation, blah, blah, blah. So throughout the life cycle of the Wi-Fi network, you want the labor cost per AP to be lower. Over the history of time, the labor cost per AP, the promises are it goes down. It doesn't. You need more and more boxes, configurations, firmware updates, compatibility matrices and all of that, stay away uh, as much as you can. Um, but, but for RTLS, I created uh, another index called Extra Frustrating Fighting with Infrastructure Nerd Knobs, which is called uh, FIN Index. Uh, <laughs> and with this, uh, you want to consider different things for deployment, uh, how expensive it can get. You want to consider different things for maintenance of the, of the system and the things that cause you extra headache. We'll send you the slides so you can go through them. Same with troubleshooting. All I'm saying is the, FN, the lower the FN index, the more FN fun you will have. Uh, and uh, there's some good RTLS uh, accuracy tips for you as well. Read them when you can, but essentially 
have a lot of APs, place them in a smart, smart locations, and, and think about what, what you're doing. Oh, and uh, how to cheat in a location demo. So if you want to oversell your uh, location system to your customers, no problem. Uh, here's a few tips for that as well. Uh, put an AP every meter, uh, pl place the radios where they really can't go in a production deployment, like under the floor, uh, you, you know, on the floor or whatever. Limit down the area, this is my favorite. So limit down the tracking area to be so small, for example, at a trade show, just Put a dot, calibration dot on your booth, and that's it. And then you can show the customers, like, look, look, it's, it's right here. The lo location estimate is right here. That's the only point you calibrate it, so that's the only location where the estimate can be. <laughs> Works really, really well. I've done it several times. Uh, <laughs> And, and one of my favorite ones is like learn the location tracking route on your demo, and then uh, only take that path, like we, the path that works well, only take that path when the customer sees it, see, works well, and then they go one meter off and it goes to sh <laughs> Oh, she said it, Jennifer said it, shit. <laughs> uh, anyway. One more thing, I promised to leave Milan uh, 10 minutes, I left him five, but I did leave him something, so uh, Milan from Sevio uh, would like to come here to talk, or does he, or does Peter? Milan, where are you, man? Hop on stage. So, so the thing is, um, uh, Kevin from AT&T, or was it Phil Jackson from Hilton yesterday said, uh, oh, so you're, you have an RTLS presentation, you're gonna say BLE is, is the end all, be all, and the best system ever, and nothing else is needed. No. And that's why uh, BLE is really good for indoors and, and carpeted spaces, hospitals, and all that. Uh, however, in manufacturing, for example, warehouses, it's this guy, all this guy. So, so uh, please welcome Milan from Ultra Wideband Company, Sevio. Thank you. Give me a clicker. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Milan. Yeah. Much appreciate that. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Yusitu, for giving me three minutes. Okay, I will try to make it. I just was prepared so, for ten sorry. minutes. Keith, so. can we have a few <laughs> extra minutes, please? Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, we can't. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll so just actually, sit here yeah. actually, feeling sorry for you. Yeah. Nice, thank you for telling me, it's appreciate. Actually, uh, nice to meet you, my name is Milan Šimek, I'm from, from Czech Republic, from a company called Sevio. Actually, maybe you are, you are um, quite surprised why another bald guy is standing here, <laughs> after another bald guy, because I'm doing, I'm doing RTLS six years, you are doing RTLS for um, 10, 15 years, so even I'm more bald than you, yeah. so actually because of ultra wideband. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so actually, I'm not here alone, so I, we, I came here with my colleague Peter. He's VP sales for North, North America. So he's some, some, somewhere there. So he, he has lots of hairs. And actually, maybe you are asking why I'm standing here. What's what story behind? Actually, let me give you some overview. overview. One month ago, one guy kick, kicked, kicked up our doors in Czech Republic. You see, one month ago, he came to our offices and he told us, okay guys, I like what you are doing, I would like to know more. So we spent all the day just talking to UC and just showing, showing him all the stuff, what we are doing with Ultra Wideband. And next week he just called us that he needs to get the demo kit. So we provide him in the demo kit for free, for sure, because he, he told me he doesn't have any money, so we just sent him the kit for playing. And two weeks ago he called us again and he told us, hi guys, you need to join me for the VLAN Pros conference in, in, in North America. And uh, we, just, we just thought about it a little bit and it happened. So two, two weeks ago, we decided just to c come here and support UC during his presentation. So it, it took us about 26 hours of traveling from Czech Republic just to, to get there and we came here last midnight. So hope you will enjoy it and what we see up to now, so we see that we are going to have very good time here. Thank you for it. So uh, regarding uh, our company, quite briefly, we are in the indoor position, positioning system more than, uh, officially more than six years. I found the company six years ago, a uh, company is called Sevio. We are only focusing on, on the ultra wideband positioning. Quick sales pitch, I know this is not, not going to be the sales presentation, so, so, but what I am most, mo, mo, want to mention is mostly what I am proud of, that between our references with those six years, you can find mostly the industrial and automotive companies. And I will try to explain, explain you during my presentation why, why industrial customers for ultra wideband, why there are no healthcare, why there is no museums, airports, etc. So generally, generally, also I am, during my presentation, I am not going 
into the detail about ultra wideband because there is Steven from MIST who is going to have the presentation on Friday morning, deep dive about the, all the technical stuff about ultra wideband. But mostly, what I want to mention about just what really ultra wideband is and what it's not, it's uh, you know just some of you already know uh, ultra wideband. It's some special radio with 500 megahertz bandwidth, and it's what's already proven that this technology which really may, may, may uh, deliver the project for the industrial customers and works in the harsh environment. It's mostly famous uh, thanks to the Irish company DecaWave, which just uh, released the first commercial chip back 2013. We also use the DecaWave chip, and the uh, techniques which are known for the ultra position positioning are mostly time of flight, time difference of arrival, and angle of arrival. No RSSI like you know from Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. What I want also to mention that I am not standing here like the guy who is, who is claiming that ultra wideband is the best. It's absolutely not. It's, it's not, not better than Wi-Fi and BLE, and even the BLE and Wi-Fi is not better than ultra wideband. Ultra wideband is great for the really industrial and harsh environment for specific verticals, and I am going to introduce them. And also, it's absolutely not true that ultra wideband can deliver centimeter precision. It's absolutely not true, and you, you can do it maybe in the lab environment, as the UC mentioned, but generally not, not in the real environment. You can reach something like 30 centimeters. So, so regarding the ultra wideband and uh, RTS technology, uh, technology, it works in absolutely similar way like the Wi-Fi. I mean, you have the ultra wideband anchors and the ceiling. We deploy, we deploy with the grids 20 by 20. Let's say one anchor per 100 meter squares. Uh, all connected to the local server. So every anchor requires one cable. This is quite high TCO. I'm going to mention it. There is a server connection where is the location engine, and also there are the active text with the battery, so you place the text on the pallet, on the, on the material, and also on the forklifts. So right now, it's just coming the magic about the why we are telling that ultra wideband is, has very nice fit for the industrial customers, uh, because of very important and the magic when we are talking about the indoor positioning systems is with the zones. Because if you are not deploying the zones, like the rooms, so you are not getting the business data. Because if you stand in front of the manager and you, you will present him like, take a look what precision we have and we are working like this way, so it is nice and what is it good for? I want to have the nice dashboard, red, green, blue, green, etc., to know how my operation is, is performing. So everything is about the zones. And in the, for example, in manufacturing, industrial environment, the zones are very close to each other, very close to each other. And the size of the zone is something like the meter per meter. So very good example. So when we are working, for example, for the automotive customers like Toyota, I will show you one case. So there is a press shop, there is a, there is a stock, and there is a welding. And those zones are far each other about one meter. And you need to be able to distinguish when the pallets are moving from zone to the zone between those zones. And those are only the data for which customer pays you. He needs to know very reliably that the, 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 your, your material is in the correct zone for a given time and they are producing according to the plan. So, generally, difference between common narrowband technology with the precision of three meters, let's say with average precision of three meters, as you see mentioned, and ultra wideband technology, which average precision about 30 centimeters, is this one. This is how really location works. Even ultra wideband has lots of errors. In the radius, average 30 centimeters. And another narrowband has the radius, average radius, like three meters. If you take the results, you can see, okay, how many times you saw the fault reading of the zone identification. So, and it results in what? You have the confidence level of precision. So confidence level of precision of the narrowband technology is 100% in facility, and it's also 100% for the ultra wideband. But generally, uh, confidence level for, at the zone level, you have a 30%, and for ultra wideband, you have something like 98%. So generally, that's why, why the ultra wideband absolutely fits for the industrial customer needs. And with this kind of precision and robustness and reliability, you can do cases like this one. This is, this, is the, this is the video from Toyota. I don't know if you can see this graph. This graph. So every time, so we, we install 2,000 tags on the metal pallets in the press shop in Czech Republic, Toyota. And every time when the operator takes the pallet and put it to the floor on the zone one meter by one meter, his stock is increasing. And this is not doing manually, this is, this is done automatically. Every time when the, when the pallet is placed on the correct zone, we increase the, increase the stock and customer can control his production. So okay, let's go, let's go to see some, uh, to see some uh, actions more. So what we use for, for deploying and designing? 
Uh, you know, location software is no more about just only X, Y, Z. We use, same like you guys, some kind of, de some kind of the uh, designing tool and planners. This is, for example, our planner, which we developed five years ago, just to, which is our helping us to simulate and design ultra wideband signal propagation. So before we are going to customer, we are doing site survey. We are placing all the anchors on the correct spots. With, we are making lots of pictures. And after we simulate ultra wideband signal propagation, we have our own antenna, so we know the, how the signal is propagated. And after also, we have the lots of tools which help us to calculate the battery life, the cell capacity, etc. So you know, just working like like as you guys with the, in the Wi-Fi world, we are working in the same in the ultra wideband world. Just everything needs to be well prepared, simulated, and, and well designed. It. Some some cases about just where it works well. So for example, for Budweiser, Budweiser asks us to replace their UHF RFID, which are mounted mounted in the floor, just for improve the tracking because it didn't work properly because of the high maintenance cost. So what we did, we deployed about 68 anchors, about 10,000 meters squares, and the, the, here you can see the results. So there are the zones, each pallet, each, each, each pallet place, there are the zones, and the width of the pallet is 80 centimeters. And you need to be able to distinguish between left and right, 40 and 40. If you are 40, if you are 40, the driver is getting bad command, and he's doing wrong. So generally, we need to be in about 100 time percent quite precise with the precision up to 40 centimeters. And you can see all the zones which we draw within the facility. So what, what you can do with those zones, after the customer is creating the spaghetti diagram to know about the indoor, indoor, indoor fleet uh, forklift tracking uh, analytics and also the heat maps about, about to know about the 12 times where they are, where they are standing lot. And also they are doing some kind of the analytics with the with the loaded and unloaded trips, et cetera. So generally, this is just add-on. This is just how, how customers are really uh, taking advantage of the quite precise location data. So this, this, is, this is what I wanted to mention. You have some kind of fails. This is something why redundancy is important. I think one month ago, one, one windy storm came to the Czech Republic and destroyed the part of stock and destroyed also several anchors. So we are also working with redundancy with 10%. When we are designing, we are, we are, we are uh, play, uh, designing their 10% anchors more to be ready for this kind of disasters. Okay, biggest ultra wave installation we are working right now, and we are absolutely proud and telling that this is, uh, I'm just closing. 520 anchors in real, really installed in the Škoda, Czech Republic. So right now we are in the half of installation, it's quite a crazy task. And this is how it looks like a first, first installation, the part of installation, forklifts going within the, within the shelves. And our task is to track about 300 forklifts in the area of 150,000 meters squares. And right now we, we do the part, of the part of the installation. And all those precision you are able to achieve when you have properly designed it and properly deployed ultra wideband, ultra wideband positioning system. So coming to the end. So Blocking massive adoption is what, what, what the market is missing right now. Awareness, because when you ask you who knows ultra wideband, five of you, I think 10 of you. So thanks for Apple for adoption last September. Also, price of tax right now is in the tens of dollars. Also, thanks for NXP coming to the market with their new chips. We are happy to do for, for this action. And also, as uh, you see mentioned, hire a TCO because you need a lot of wiring and networking. And also, thanks to the MIST for our starting cooperation because our goal is to, is to take advantage of already existing wiring, just which is done for the MIST or any other supplier and take POE out, just only to connect Anchor. And after you are reducing TCO of the customer. So, so those are the three bullets which are really blocking the massive adoption of ultra wideband. So we are we have the very very nice story in front of us with the with the mist. So generally, uh, guys, if you are quite interested in the how ultra wideband work in real, so as uh, you mentioned, so we are going just to few show you some some few spots and the, the accuracy accuracy test. So we are preparing the demo for you in the lobby for all the all three days. So we will finish this afternoon. So come to the lobby and play with the ultra wideband demo kit. We will set it up within 30 minutes, and you are more than welcome. Thank you very much.